So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Make Block Laser Box, which comes in at the Glowforge full spectrum used kind of desktop high-end hobby laser. We're gonna see what this thing does and this could be a good fit for you. All right, welcome back to the Make or Break Shop. My name is Brandon, and here in the shop, we like to make things and break things because we know that messing up is part of the process. And a big part of the whole like design process that I love is the whole iteration, where you have an idea and you go through the full iteration process, and then you're able to have something cool on the end. And laser cutters in general lets you iterate through ideas really, really fast. Of all the tools I've got in my shop, lasers are probably the most useful because you can go from idea to like version 20 of that idea really quick. And usually fairly cheap just because of the speed and just the way lasers work. So there are a lot of different hobby laser cutters that are out there. I've done a full video that kind of breaks down all of them. And this is actually one in that review that at the time I had not been able to get my hands on. These guys actually reached out to me, asked if I would do a review on the unit. So they are not paying me, but they did supply the unit for me to check out. So this is the Make Block Laser Box, which is a mouthful. And this is actually the basic version. There's also a pro version, which is about five to $600 more. And we'll get into kind of the differences, but the biggest probably off the bat is if you've seen other reviews of this unit, it's white. And in this case, the basic one is black. So like all the reviews, we're gonna hit the features first, then we'll go pros and cons, and then I'll give you my recommendation at the end. So we have taken this out of just the general shipping box and now we are going to pretty much get everything out of this guy and see what we are working with. All right, so overall impressions right off the bat, um, real nice. And so inside of the box, uh, it looks like it's gonna come with some tubing uh, for our air exhaust. So that's gonna be the manual, power, clamp for the exhaust, and a USB cable um, to connect it to the computer. Then, if we actually take this guy out, packaging's pretty nice. And you can see what we're working with on the inside. So overall impressions right here at the beginning, uh, this is just really nice, it's put together. Uh, you can definitely tell this is on the higher end for these kind of desktop machines. Um, the entire laser unit is this entire module. Glowforge does something kind of similar. All right, and then coming around to the back, uh, so we've got our power. Uh, we've got a USB import and looks like you can connect it by ethernet as well. Then moving on down, air exhaust, and then this is gonna be, it's like another data port to hook up some uh, accessories if you get it. But uh, really we just gotta hook up a couple things and we'll be good to go. This unit comes with an exhaust fan. So this will be set up in the back. All right, now we're gonna turn this guy on and it says it's gonna run through a calibration process does sound like there is water, I think, already in the unit. Then it looks like the rest of the setup is on the website. Download the software. All right, so we got the software installed. And I'm gonna go through the setup real quick. This is the basic. Uh, we're not connected by LAN, we're connected by USB. Then what's nice is it gives you a bunch of sample projects to start off with. This kit actually comes with um, a good bit of basswood, as you can use as an example project. I think we're gonna make this little guy which is an iPhone holder. So I got uh, some three millimeter basswood. It comes with a code. The software's gonna be able to read because of the camera. So we're gonna put this inside. It goes and it identifies the material. It gives us an image and then it identified what the material is. So you can see right up here, three millimeter basswood. So that's pretty cool. So I'm guessing all of these different materials you could actually buy from them. And then you get it super easy where it just automates all of the settings, which is great if you don't use a lot of lasers. It takes all the guesswork out of you. You can see over here on the power and the speed settings, it updated them. And I imagine with the engrave, if there was engrave. So in the engrave settings, it updates the power and speed as well as it looks like the cut. All right, and uh, so we're gonna cut this out. So I think I hit this guy. So once you send it from the computer, it's now stored, I'm guessing locally, and then I hit this and then everything will be good to go. And this will actually start to cut out. All right, open this guy up and um, Oh, you know, I bet not all those are supposed to get cut out. <laughs> he doesn't have an eye. I think I should have engraved probably those inside lines. So let's try this again and do some engraving so we actually get this set up right. And then I only want to cut this outside line. All right, that turns purple. And then there should be a cut line. And then everything else should be an engraved. And actually, we'll make this little guy cut out too. And I believe we're going to go resend it. And we're going to try this again. Let's 
So this time, all right, all that stays together. Oh, you know what, I bet that's supposed to be cut out. <laughs> well, eventually you get the idea, so. So what does this thing actually come with? It comes with this 40 watt laser cutter. This is all just one unit that's all put together, ready to go. And then in the back is a air pump. So this unit actually has the exhaust in the back. There's not any internal fan, um, but that air pump does a really good job of pulling the exhaust out and then you duct it out wherever you're at. I'm in my garage, so usually I just go out my front door or sometimes out of my windows. So like most of these kind of high end hobby desktop lasers, uh, you're at the low end on the wattage so 40 watts, uh, but for a lot of stuff that you're gonna do, more than likely 40 is gonna be able to get you there. You're still gonna be able to cut thicker stuff that you could with like a 100 watt laser. Um, you're just gonna have to do more passes to be able to get through it all. But in terms of engraving, cutting, all kind of your normal stuff you would see with a CO2 laser or any of the other reviews I've done on my channel, you're gonna be able to do the exact same thing on this unit. So in terms of bed size, you're looking at 500 by 300 millimeters with a max material height of 20 22 millimeters. And that's about the same with most other units. And resolution in terms of engraving is at 1000 DPI, and that's pretty standard with all the other units as well. Overall, it's a really nice build. Um, it's a glass top, and this actually door is, is super nice. I love uh, the gas struts here in the back. It's got a camera system um, that works when you close it, so you can see what is inside. Unlike the Full Spectrum Muse, which actually moves it back and forth and takes a picture, um, this is a wide angle camera, so once you drop this down, um, you will get an image of the entire work area in the software. And before we get to the software, a couple other features that actually makes this thing pretty unique is the water reservoir. So like all lasers, you're gonna have to have two other systems that come with it. One's gonna be in a system for exhaust, as well as a cooling system to help keep the uh, laser tube cool as it's firing. In this case, the water I think is actually right here. So it's internal to the entire machine. So you don't have external water sitting somewhere where you have to figure out what to do. So that's actually really, really nice. I haven't seen that on many other lasers. Now, one thing this doesn't have that most other units do is any type of internal fan. Um, you really can't run this machine well without the fan in the back, but it does a really good job of exhausting the entire system and getting it out. So basically the money end of all of this is right inside of here. And this is pretty handy. This is just a metal lid that is magnetic. And so you can pull this off and then you can get into the guts of the machine. So that's the end of the laser right there. Um, that is the lens that you'd be able to replace. And then it also has air assist. So you can see this tube coming in right there. Um, that's gonna be compressed air that is putting out any fires that is happening. And then you can see kind of the stepper motors that are adjusting the Z axis on the sky. So again, if you use material that has this, it's automatically gonna know what the depth is. Um, but if you don't, it's still going to be able to adjust it automatically, but you might have to dial it in Everything runs on linear rails, um, which is really nice. So the speed is not only quick, but is also super accurate. Then the actual bed itself is a honeycomb design bed. There's screws on the outside, and so I'm pretty sure you could replace that as needed. But then one thing that's super useful that I wish was on all the lasers is this bottom is removable. So um, this isn't a pass-through, so a lot of them will have like a slot you can open up and you can push your material in. This doesn't have that, but this guy, removes and what's nice is as you're cutting especially small stuff you're going to have lots of little things kind of drop through that honeycomb and it is a pain to clean out and this honeycomb isn't just sitting in here it's actually screwed in so you would have to unscrew the honeycomb to be able to get to the base so you can just pull this thing out dump it out in the trash can and this is super handy you might have seen that and be like oh you could totally just take this out drop this down and look you have a pass through which is right there. Now that actually doesn't work because this thing has a ton of safety features. And that kind of gets to where I think this thing is targeted, really towards the maker spaces where folks that may not be super familiar with lasers are working, or especially in the like education inside of a classroom. So because of that, it's really hard to run this thing in a way that you aren't supposed to. That base has to be inserted for it to run. Um, the top has to be inserted for it to run. You can hear it beep um, when it's shut. That means everything's good to go. And so they really make it pretty easy to get one of these units into a place that may not be kind of your normal standard shop. So another nice thing about this is you can actually import projects directly in. So um, you can come up here and then you go import. And then from the website, you can actually download projects. Um, but you can see not only does it bring in all the vectors, but it's also bringing in the cut settings. Um, so the power and the speed 
and it's got it split between engravings as well as the cut. And we are going to send it to the laser. It's gonna give us the work time, and then everything now should be stored on the laser, and then we can hit start. Then just pulling this guy out. And we can grab all these pieces and put it together. Now the software is the big difference between the basic and the pro unit. So there's a really cool feature that I can't do on this one, but you could on the pro, where basically you just draw something with a marker uh, and then you put it in there and then you hit the button and it cuts it out. Now this one doesn't have that so I can test it, but it does have a feature called bring a sketch to life, which is basically you take a logo or an image that exists in the real world, you put it in there, the camera takes a picture of it, and then you can kind of drag it over onto your material and then cut it out. So this example is gonna be kind of ridiculous. What I'm gonna try to do is take the text off of the uh, Chick-fil-A sauce package that I found in our house and then put that on a piece of plywood. A cool idea for this would be if you have like a written recipe, you could actually put that in, pull that text over and put it on a cutting board. And that'd be a really practical example, but this is not practical whatsoever. So let's drop this in. All right, so we already got this in here. I'm going to drop this right in. Then if we're coming over to the software, I can use this little marquee selection and maybe we just do this part and let's see how well this works. And now I can actually pull this over and um, we can engrave it. All right, we're gonna send it to the laser. I'm actually gonna take this out because I think when it auto focuses, um, it might like run into this. So we're gonna remove this. All right, so this is a completely ridiculous example. You can definitely see that we've got the Chick-fil-A logo in there. Um, the text isn't as like crisp. Um, still, if you were really gonna wanna duplicate this, you take a picture and then kind of clean it up in a vector editing software. But for something really thick or uh, something really simple, <laughs> this is a pretty cool feature that uh, this guy has. And then the only other difference I saw between the Pro and the Basic is just the warranty. So this one is gonna come with six months and then the Pro is a full 12 months. All right, so let's talk about some pros and cons. Probably the biggest pro to this unit is just how easy it is to use. You can get cutting or engraving very quick. You can do that with cheaper units nor different types of units, but when you factor in the safety that is also involved with this, um, that's a really cool combination. So again, if you are in a makerspace or you are in a classroom, I really think this could be a, a pretty good option for you just because of the simplicity of the design and the simplicity of the software. And to go along with that simplicity, another cool thing that uh, MakeBlock provides and a few other kind of laser manufacturers do something similar, is if you buy material directly for them, um, they're gonna include this code and what's nice is when you actually bring this into the software the camera takes a picture of it and it automatically updates the settings for cutting and engraving based on the type of material and then it sets the uh, focus uh, for three millimeters or whatever the thickness is this has autofocus um, but it goes ahead and sets it depending on what you're using so probably the hardest part about lasers is there's a lot of trial and error as you kind of dial in the settings for different materials and different thicknesses and different results but having kind of the those stock settings already built into material they've already tested is super easy. So again, that goes back to just this unit is really, really easy to use right out of the box. Again, another big pro on this is you don't need any internet connection to run the software and the software is just actual local program you can use on Mac or PC. So you can plug in just by USB, which is what I did. You can also go ethernet and you can also plug that into a router and then you can come in with Wi-Fi. Again, the water being internal, I love that. That's a super cool feature. You can still get into it and refill it as you need, but just the fact that you don't have to worry about the water or the water pump from the beginning just makes it super easy to use. So on the cons, 
None of these are really deal breakers. These are more kind of differences with other units that are out there. So probably the biggest one that I, I do wish they would add is just some type of internal fan. It doesn't have to be that powerful, but if you did want to run this without that external fan, you could get some of that smoke coming out. Obviously, you that's not the best situation in general, but it does give you an option. Without that, all that smoke is going to stay inside because there is no airflow. Um, also on the pro side, there's another box. It's actually an air purifier where all that gets cycled into. Um, so that's a cool addition, but again, that wasn't something that I could test with this one. And if you are looking at this compared directly to the Glowforge, um, probably the biggest thing on the Glowforge side of things is just the community. There are a lot of projects as well as suggestions on their forums, um, which is always great about Glowforge. But just in terms of the machine itself, um, this is a great unit and it could be a really cool option for you, depending on how much you are wanting to spend. And so then on the price, that is kind of a pro and a con, depending on how you look at it. So this basic unit uh, is $4,000 and then the pro is $4,600. Again, the big difference between the two, at least that I saw, were some of the features in terms of the software. This kind of comes in the same range as like a Glowforge or the basic end of a full spectrum use. You're not gonna get the pass-through slots like some of those more expensive desktop machines have so you can get bigger material in there but it's pretty um, competitive at that price point now if you compare this to something like a k40 which i recently did a review on that comes from ohmtech right up there which is like 400 dollars that is way cheaper but you don't get any of the tech smarts that come with this so you're not going to get a camera with it you're not going to get a lot of the safety features that automatically come with it um, the k40 doesn't come with an air assist and even if you upgrade uh, the k40 to a 50 watt you still don't have have kind of the bells and whistles that these kind of higher end desktop units are going to have. So my recommendation, if you're in a classroom setting or you're in a maker space and you have a lot of kids around or just folks where you really want to have really good safety features, then this is a great option because you're going to get the safety. Plus it's just a great machine overall. It's built well. And then the actual software and the interface is really, really easy to use. Again, some of those features that come, especially with the pro where you can just like draw on a sheet of paper and it cuts it out. I mean, that's super cool. I haven't seen that on, on anything else. And even the uh, bring a sketch to life feature we did earlier was really easy to use. Now you could totally use this if you're maybe more like me and you're working in your own shop, but you are pretty technical and you like getting into the weeds. You still can bring in your own artwork and you can really dial in the settings and you can do it. You're just not going to be able to kind of turn the dials like you could with something like a full spectrum use or get really into the weeds with all the technical upgrades and stuff you can do with the units that you would get from Omtech. So we have done a ton of laser reviews on this channel. There's a 50 watt right there. There's a diode right there. There's the full spectrum use. So we've got a ton of other reviews on those channels and we'll jump into my big breakdown of all the lasers that are out there right now. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.